Now, I want to speak briefly on the on the divides, uh, gender divides, and you we we need to appreciate that. Um, when COVID came initially, um, we all didn't understand the nature of the virus, its impacts um, on communities or on health. Um, we understood initially from the beginning the fact that it was dangerous, it was very infectious, people could die and all that. But one thing that was clear was that in most of the responses, in most of the national responses in most countries, the initial, the initial response was we need to use, um, we, 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 uh, we need to engage doctors to understand um, how we can deal with this pandemic. And most nations even forgot that there were nurses, there were community health workers, there were lab um, technicians who could help or could assist. It took some of us to speak and speak to make it to make authorities understand that the, the, the problem at hand was not just going to be about doctors, it was going to be about everybody within the, the hierarchy of the, the, the health the health system. And therefore we need to bring everybody on board, listen to everybody and appreciate what every professional grouping and every other um, worker within the space could also bring on board. And that resulted in many cases where um, some of uh, the volunteers were brought on board as um, uh, tracers, contact tracers, and to assist with um, education, to assist with uh, vaccine rollouts, and so on and so forth. For mainstream professionals, and I want to speak specifically on nurses and midwives, um, we stayed in the clinical area and in the outpatient departments and on the wards and so on, providing the necessary care that is needed. But of course, the challenges of the pandemic was quite overwhelming because the PPEs were not available. The, 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 sometimes you, you needed um, a, a whole number of people to be tested because one person has um, been found to be positive. Testing was uh, not adequate um, sometimes because employers wanted to avoid having to invest in testing and isolation and quarantine uh, provision of the accommodation for same, um, they would not disclose the status of somebody who has fallen sick and uh, it is suspected that that person has tested positive all in the hope of reducing costs and managing the, the response. So these were some of the dire challenges that actually resulted in a lot of infections among nurses and midwives and other professionals and um, resulted in some cases in death. When you talk about the community health workers, same issues affected them because they were working in the communities, they didn't have the adequate uh, protective equipment and they needed to also continue with some of the work that they were doing. But most importantly, um, some of the programs and projects they were on um, were more or less abandoned because the focus was on the pandemic. And we, we the, the maternal and child services that needed to be rolled out and so on were, were deeply affected. So at the end of the day, if you listen to some of the statistics that have been churned out, um, a lot of um, the maternal deaths that could have been avoided within this period also actually um, could not be um, prevented. And a lot of um, um, infant mortalities that have also occurred within the period. And we have missed certain opportunities in, uh, in terms of vaccinating um, children in terms of other conditions like, the, um, like polio and the rest that could have actually had um, impact on us achieving the sustainable development goals and universal health coverage as a whole. So it is indeed um, an issue that going forward, we all need to talk about. And I'm happy that the organizers have organized this, um, this, this webinar, uh, giving us the opportunity to talk about some of the issues. And we need to also focus on the gender specific challenges for women and the women health force and look at how we can build our systems to um, be able to support going into the future because we never know when the next pandemic is going to hit. 
and gender-based violence is one issue that is also um, was also seen during the lockdowns. And it's about time each and every nation um, look at the ILO Convention 190 and ratify it within our nations. It's very, very important so that we can protect um, female um, workers within the health sector space. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.